Hi folks and welcome to my Valhalla Ghost Protocol series where I play Valheim in ghost mode meaning that the mobs won't attack me so I can get on with doing the more interesting stuff. So one of the first things we have to deal with is if we go inside the uh, little shack that we renovated here you can see it's getting pretty smoky in here and I'm told that that's because he's oh ah now I'm on fire. <laughs> Let's see how long that lasts for. There we go. All right, that's a note to you, boys and girls. Don't step in the fire. Don't play with fire. Um, fortunately, since I'm in ghost mode, I can't die to it anyway, but still. it's. Uh, I, I'm trying to play the game as if I could die. I wish it had a mode where the aggressive mobs wouldn't attack you, but you still took damage. I mean, that's what I would have hoped ghost mode would be, since there's also a god mode where... You also don't can't take damage and die, so I'm not really sure what the difference is supposed to be between the two. But maybe the devs will get around to changing that. Anyway, the uh, problem we have, let me get my hammer in hand, is that this opening here isn't quite big enough. Uh, so what do I want to do? Uh, remove his middle mouse button. There we go. So let's just take that stuff out there. And hopefully that will uh, desmogify our house a little bit better. Okay, now if we have a look here, let's get rid of the hammer. Uh, we go to the workbench, we can look at all the different stuff we can make. So we can make ourselves a tunic and pants, which would be, you know, w both warmer and if we were worried about taking damage you know uh, provide a tiny bit of armor of course you can see here armor one uh, for that we'll need a bunch of more leather scraps look in our inventory we only have six at the moment and five would be required just to make the pants if you look at the tunic same thing five the other thing we'd like to make is a flint knife Hey, look at that. We need two more leather scraps and some wood. Um, and what's the other thing we're going to want to do? Is I guess basically eventually a bow. Yet more leather scraps, eight of them and more wood. So we need lots of leather scraps and those we get from boar. So we're going to have to do a bunch of boar hunting. Um, the other thing I want to look at is the food. The food is kind of weird. Um, so the first thing we want to do... If, if I look in the inventory, we have eight of these raw meat that we got from, I uh, don't know if it was from the deer or the boar, oh, probably a combination of the two, the deer and the boar. Uh, that's raw, we really want to cook that up before we can eat it, so to do that we need to build a cooking station. Over here. Oh yeah, I want the hammer again. Yeah. And right click to bring up the build menu and crafting and here it is here a cooking station and the problem there if you look down at the bottom it shows you what we need to build it we need two wood and we don't have enough of that so let's go collect us some wood and if we happen to come across a couple of uh, a couple of boar or deer well along the way well then I mean particularly boar we can collect more scraps all right get our axe in hand and it's time to get some wood is this a uh, beach yep hmm i'm not hearing those uh, sound effects at all Let's have a look at our settings. See if we can at least hear something when we make our hammer blows. I was pretty sure I upped this last time. There we go. That's better. Get a little bit of that wind in there. Come back, come back! My log is trying to escape me. Ha! You cannot outrun me. For I am, like, 
level one running or whatever. I don't think there actually is a running skill. Just jumping. We really need a better axe, but we'll take care of that shortly. Where did my other log get to? Oh, there it is. Now, if you look down, uh, I guess by my left arm when I swing and it rolls back, you'll see a little burst of red. Uh, it didn't happen that time because the log didn't roll far enough. But anyways, that was because the log was actually rolling into me and damaging me. Or it would be damaging me if I wasn't playing a ghost. So you really want to be careful when uh, hitting those logs, breaking up those logs, because they can roll on you and damage you. Okay, let's get in here. And bring out our hammer again. And now we have enough stuff to make a cooking station. And it has to be placed over the fire to be useful, so... Let's put it as close to that wall as I can get it. Okay. There. Alright. Now if I hover over the cooking station itself, you can see it's... Uh, same as I explained in the previous episode about the fire. I can just press E and it'll take some item out of some food item out of my inventory and cook it. I only currently the the only cookable items I have right now are those six six or eight uh, pieces of meat. So there are two spots that I can cook here. So I'll throw up those two pieces of meat. Now the thing when you're cooking is stuff can burn. So you have to listen for when it sizzles. That means it's cooked. And the second time it sizzles, it's burnt. So we'll just wait around. And uh, same as with the fire, you see it says on the little menu there, it says 1 to 8 cook item. There, that's that first sizzle. So I can take those off. Get a little bit closer. There. Did I get my two? Come on. Come on, a little bit closer to the fire. I just don't want to burn, that's all. And put two more on. Anyway, so if you want to cook a specific item, then you could move it up into your, one of your hot bar slots and then press the number for that. It'll cook that instead of picking one at random. <clears throat> now the way food works here is, uh, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you can see a little, uh, a little fork icon. So that's showing how much, I think that's, it's called endurance. So basically, your hit points in the game, or whatever you want to call them. Let's start two more. And we're only at 25, which isn't great. Uh, that's because we haven't eaten much. Uh, so uh, to the left of it, you can't really see it here because it's so dark in the image right now. But there's a spot for three different kinds of food. So you can basically only have three different kinds of food in your belly at once. Um... So right now we have mushrooms and raspberries, and now we have this meat. So let's go into our inventory and let's move some of those up. So we'll raspberries at eight, mushrooms at seven, and the cooked meat at six. So now if I press six, I'll, you'll see some meat appears down there and I just ate it. I ate a mushroom. And I need a strawberry. Uh, let's grab these last two here. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. No more cookable items. Anyway, if I were to press 8 again, try and eat another strawberry, or sorry, not strawberry, raspberry, tells me you can't eat anymore. So I can have those three in there in my belly at once. And right now I can't eat anything else. And you'll see my, uh, oh, actually, I think it's called stamina. It, my stamina is rising, up, has gotten up to 60 now. Oh, 74. And that's as high as it's going to get with these foods. There are other foods that have more energy and and uh, will get your stamina higher. Anyway, eventually those will start flashing. And only once they've started flashing or have disappeared completely can I then 
eat another food that will go into that slot. So it's kind of odd, but you get used to it after a while. The most annoying thing is that, you know, if you want, you pretty much always want to have three foods in you to get your maximum uh, stamina. So that really means you're going to have three food slots or three of your hot bar slots taken up by food, which is a bit annoying. Okay, next thing we need to make is a bed. Oh, I don't need this. Go to the hammer. Rightmost button. Crafting. Oh, furniture. Bed is under furniture. So for the bed, we need just eight wood. Cool. Well, we have that. And there's a fine place for it. Oh, uh, Moonin. Where's this Hugin or Moonin? I always forget which one this is right now. I've got in this game. Get the hammer out of my hand. Hugin! What you got to say? Sleep the night away in your bed and awaken feeling refreshed and full of energy. Was this a commercial? Another improvement to your home would be some chests where you can store items. It is good practice to always have some spare equipment. If something unfortunate should happen to you while exploring. Indeed. I've been there. All right. Goodbye. Uh, so first I have to claim the bed. Uh, because if I die, well, I can't die in ghost mode. But if I wasn't in ghost mode, then this is where I would respawn. was my last claimed bed. So let's claim it. Now my spawn point is set. And let's go to bed so that it's so we have some sunlight for the rest of what we do in this episode. Once again, you run at the head of your warriors, the weight of your father's axe in your hand. You wake up with a war cry on your lips. <laughs> yeah, that's my war cry. Get used to it. Okay, uh, we only have one mushroom left, and we still need to go and get ourselves more scraps of leather. So let's go do that. <laughs> Glad I slept through the night. It's barely able to see anything. Well, if we're going to wander around and look for boar, let's at least have a look at our map and see where we should walk, where we haven't been north. Well, actually, I should go over to the water first. Which is due east. Which is that way. Okay. Through a bit of forest we go. No! That's not east, that's north, you bozo. That's east. Oh, I'm getting so good at jumping. <laughs> yeah, another thing is, you know, there's also a punching skill. So if you really wanted to, like I don't have an axe in my hand right now. Is this a beach? Okay. You can actually kind of like Minecraft style beat up a tree and get some wood out of it. So let's go pick on something smaller. Ah, uh, here we go. This is more our size. And just by doing that, if we go ahead and look at our levels. There's some unarmed combat here. See that? Just doing that got me up to level 8. Well, actually, I think I had a couple of accidental punches in on the boar, the boar or the deer last episode, but most most of that came from just punching down that little tree now. Well, and the time I spent fruitlessly punching down the big tree. There's a boar for us. Come to me, my little scraps of leather. Oh, let's kill this guy, too. Just 
to get his resin. He can use resin to make torches, which can be handy. Oh yeah, I talked about, you know, pressing the R key to stow your weapons. Or the other ways you can stow your weapons. One of the reasons to do that is because you use up less energy walking and running if you're if you don't have anything in your hands. Hmm. There's another critter called a neck. And their meat is actually a little has more sustenance than uh, I can hear them to the left. Oh, there's one swimming away there. It's got to be more of them around. Uh, they their meat is more sustaining than just the deer or the boar. Not by a lot, but by a little bit at least. Oh, don't be so coy. I just want to kill you. Hmm, don't say any more over here. Oh, there's some over there. Oh, there's one right here. Whoops. And you see we got a neck tail. And there it is. Nice green meat. Mmm. Over here and grab another one. For the birds, we can get feathers from the birds and use them to make arrows. But we're kind of going to have to need arrows. To be able to catch them because they're basically too quick to try and, try and get them with a... Uh, with an axe or whatever. Now there is a sneak attack, and once I've made a knife, I'll show that to you. Oops. <laughs> and I've never tried it, but you might be able to sneak up on a bird. I don't know. But uh, in order to make your first arrows typically typically you'll you'll find some in a chest somewhere we haven't run into i don't think any chests yet um but you'll probably find some in a chest so you won't really need to make any of your own but if you are having trouble finding any then wherever you see birds go to where the bird was and when it flies away sometimes you'll find a feather on the ground there. How's that doing on my scraps? Nine scraps. Well, I can do a few things with that. But yeah, you'll need a lot. So the bird just flew up from here. Let's see if I can find a feather from it. They're not always there, but sometimes they are. Come on, come here. Don't die on me now. There we go. Nope, don't say anything. Ah, I could eat another bite. So you'll see that two of my foods have faded away. The third one is blinking, so I, that means I can now eat again. So six, seven, and eight. And I have a bunch of food. I guess I should go back to the house. Yeah, because I want to make myself a knife. And I don't think that's something... No, no. Yeah, I can't make myself a knife here. I need the workbench for that. So back to the house we go. Oh yeah, I should be hopping. Hoppity hop hop. Peter Rabbit. Ooh. 
Here's some more free food. Won't get any leather scraps. Get some deer hides. Now the weird thing is, of course, you should just be able to cut up a deer hide to get leather scraps. But no, nope, no. Nope. You only get them from boars. He'll eventually calm down and... There we go. slow on the explosion there oh another thing is so if there's stuff lying on the ground that you can pick up you'll see these little sparkles drifting up in the air eventually they'll despawn um, I think if you're in the area they don't despawn but uh, if once you're far enough away from them they'll despawn um, but let's find a rock here you'll notice that this stone here doesn't have the sparkles going up because you have to do the E to pick it up first. Oh, that one was too uh, close to it. Ah, that one too. Back up so it doesn't fall on me. So now that I've picked it up and it's lying on, I've quote picked it up and it's lying on the ground. Now you'll see the sparkles coming up from it telling me here's something that you can pick up. Uh, so that's one of the things to watch out for when you kill critters and, uh, you know, or mobs and you want to get their stuff is look to see if there's any sparkles indicating something that you missed something that you didn't get I don't know why I'm getting all these freeze up, freeze ups on this uh, this time basically playing it the same as last time okay and we wanted to go back to our hovel Actually, here it is, right here. We'll eventually build something better. Oh, wait a minute. Another boar. More scraps. Alright. Now, actually, even here... Um, we should be, if I, I think I just need to pick up the hammer. There. So you see when I picked up the hammer, there's this, uh, white line. You'll see there's this white dashed line moving around. That is the radius in which the, uh, the workbench is effective. So I can build any, use the hammer to build any workbench items up to this line. And the other thing is, is that for building, well, it's, I don't know how to differentiate it, but there are things that you can only build if the workbench is covered, has a roof over it. But uh, what did I want to build here? What I wanted to build? Oh, no, I actually have to be at the workbench to build that. Okay. It's one of the things I have trouble with here is there's like all these different building modes and you do or don't have to have the hammer in your hand and so it just I wish they would unify it a little bit better all right next thing we want to do is build a flint knife we now have everything we need for that and I will uh, let's get it here And the flint knife is in two, that's fine. And now let's find something else. And I'll just demonstrate the sneak attack. Ah, oh, there's a, a neck down there. He's he's a long way from home. Unless there's a river down there that I can't see. Yeah, these guys are really far from home. Okay, so I put the knife in my hand and I press control and it's a toggle, so now I'm in sneak mode. I can sneak up. And so if you're, you can sneak up on something and attack it 
And that gives you, with a, with a knife at least, that gives you backstab. I'm not sure if it works with all weapons or whether it's just the knife. Knife's the only one I've ever tried to backstab with. But you can do a lot more damage if you make the backstab. So like even at this level you can like kill a deer with a single blow. Oops, missed the tail. There we go. Picked it up now. And in case you're wondering about these lines, well, oh, I may, oh, I probably have them turned off in the graphics. Oh, you can, no, no, you can see them up there. <laughs> Just saw one go by and I haven't seen any more yet. Yeah, actually watch here. I'll sneak on the deer. It normally takes me two blows. <laughs> Two blows with an axe, but if I'm sneaking, just one blow with a knife. Let's come up here and see if I can see. Uh, there, you see that little white line going off like that? More there. I'll probably see a lot more once I get out here. Uh, those are indicating which way the wind is blowing. And so that'll have an impact on the effectiveness of your sneak. Because obviously if you're upwind of them they'll only they have a chance of smelling you and running away so you can look at which way the wind's blowing by looking for those little white streaks and then uh, try and get downwind of them all right let's put that away and we'll just do a bit more exploring it'd be nice to find a chest this episode all right so let's explore the water line That's always a good thing to do. So this is where we started out. Oh yeah, I think we registered, we did register, didn't we? Like, you come here to register for, you know, register the elder. Okay, yeah, you can see down here. So this is where the altar for Eichthir is and so to have our boss fight with Eichthir we're gonna have to go down here with uh, I think it's two deer trophies and oh and I've got two so I could go have the boss fight but I'm not ready for that yet I got other things I want to do like I said in episode one I'm not big on combat so I want to do all the other stuff first Let's explore a bit. So I'm kind of just looking for structures that might have chests. So I can show that off. And I'm also looking for other biomes. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be, wouldn't mind finding some more mushrooms as well. Oh, you can see there's, in fact, they're starting to blink. Eat another raspberry. I can't eat all oh, of the cooked meat isn't. Yeah, so I'm through my mushrooms already. I only have two. So I need to keep an eye out for those. Oh, speak of the devil. A couple of them there anymore. Lots of raspberries. Raspberries for days. Oh yeah, you'll find these things around here as well. So these are biome specific. Oh, we'll read through it. These rune stones. Heed these words of Ulf, a poor settler in a strange land. You will find here good stone and wood. All you need to build, oh, sorry, all you need to build a house. You will need to craft a roof to keep out the rain. Then you will need walls to stop the roof from falling down. There's their sound advice. Guy must be a carpenter. Finally, you must have a door or it will be much harder to go in and out. These things Ulf has learned for himself. Yes, he sounds like a very bright guy. <coughs> now he writes them on this stone to help others. Pray to Odin for his soul. Well, thank you, Ulf. I think we beat you to it. Oh, it's getting dark. All right. Go just a little bit further. Yeah, here in the meadows there will be there will be at least one other of those rune stones. Oh, hang on here. 
Let us grab our axe and pick up some more neck meat. Uh, there's at least one other runestone. It talks about, you know, what foods you can collect and that. Yeah, among them is the boars. Okay. Tell you about this and I'll tell you about these things here. Um, and speaking of a boar. And the boars tend to hang around. Uh, the boars and the deer, I think, tend to hang around those uh, those runestones. And they also hang around the uh, the place where we came in. Our spawn point, and they hang around the uh, ice cure, ice cure altar. Now that doesn't mean you don't see them in other places, but those, are, if you're, you know, desperately desperate to find one, you can be pretty sure they're there. So this is, uh, I was going to say that this is a dolmen, um, but I'm not sure it is. I think dolmens only have two side stones. I thought they only had two. Maybe they can have three. But anyway, um, there's very often something buried in the center of them if you want to dig it up. We don't have a tool for digging yet, so... For that, we'd need a pick. But instead, we only have a pig, so we'll take that. Alright, it's getting dark. I'm going to head back to the house. Which is sort of this direction anyway. Uh, but apparently it's on top of that cliff. So let's go along here a little further. Put that away as well. So only found two mushrooms, huh? But at least I can eat one. Hang on. I picked up two mushrooms. Oh, they're not in my hot bar. I must add something else in my hot bar there. And I feel cold, yeah. That's a problem. So when you have these slopes that you have trouble walking up, try jumping, because very often you can just jump your way up them. All right, what do you got to say for me now, Hoogan? Be wary of the weather. When the temperature drops at night, or if you are wet, you will suffer from being cold. This reduces your stamina regeneration. Seeking shelter by an open flame is your best option when this happens. Yep. And that is why I'm on my way home, big bird. Ah, yes. Speaking of the flame of home. The home fire. Oh, I left my door open. Shouldn't do that, because things can go inside. I got wax. Alright, I'm going to wear my axe to bed. See you in the morning. Okay, I'm going to take one final stab at trying to find a chest here, just so you can see what that's like. So let's head in a different direction. What does the map like? Uh, actually, let's go north instead. Go that way. Uh, one thing to know about the stuff of built structures and that is uh, the animals and mobs will tr try to destroy them. Like the boar, the, the, the lovely peaceful boar you see around here, they'll like batter away at your structures and over time destroy them. Now, for just a boar, it can take quite a while to take down a wall of a building. Uh, so you'll have plenty of time to repair it. Goodness gracious, that is quite the uh, ravine. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I'll never get out of there. 
But for smaller stuff, like the reason I haven't grabbed those beehives and built my, or, and, or those bees' nests rather, and built myself my own hives, is because the boars would come along and destroy them. So until I'm ready to put up some palisades or walls or something around them, I don't want to do that. Yeah, this is the second set of bees we found over here. Oh, I'm going the wrong. Well, that's why I want to go north, but uh, north is kind of cut off to me. Well, let's go further this way, see if... Uh, see if this massive crevasse relents at all. Well, it looks like it's getting a little bit better. Yeah, so here's another one of those dolmen-like structures. Ah, there we can finally turn north. Except for the fact that we're so far south now. There's no point. Oh, here's another building right here. Let's see if we can get a... Let's see if we can score a chest before we end the episode. If not, I'll take my frustration out on this log and then call it there. Fifty fifty chance and I got a roof. Not that side. There we go. Ha! Got a chest. And what does it have for us? It has some amber. Don't know what you do with that yet. I think I think that's only used for the trader. And and in my previous playthroughs I haven't uh, gotten as far as the trader yet. And see, we have ourselves some flint head arrows. So we don't have to worry about trying to hunt down some feathers. We can just build ourselves a bow and arrow and shoot at some birds. Okay, well, I am going to call it an episode there. I uh, hope you had fun, and I hope to see you back for the next episode.